Hey everybody, welcome to another Magic of Voxel tutorial. My name is Aaron Robbins, and in this tutorial, this demonstration actually, it's not a tutorial, it's a demonstration. We're going to talk about um, how to stitch together multiple scenes from Magic of Voxel the editor into Magic of Voxel the viewer. So there's actually two programs in the Magic of Voxel family there's the editor, which we are in now and you're all familiar with, this is where you build, edit, erase, and color your voxel art. And as you know, you are limited to a size of 126 by 126 by 126. So that's the largest scene that you can work on at any one time currently. Um, but what if you have more than one of these scenes? What if you want your scene to be bigger? You have like a big landscape or some complicated castle or something, you want to render those all together. Well, there is the Magic of Voxel Viewer, which uh, can be downloaded uh, from, let's go with this website here. Um, so it's just freely available, like the editor, the viewer is freely available here, and we're on version 4 when this was recorded, whereas with Magic of Voxel we're on version 9.7. Okay, so you download that, and if you open it up, it looks very similar, except for there's no editing features in the Magic of Voxel viewer. There's just rendering features. Um, and one of the features of it is that you can stitch together multiple um, scenes that were edited and or created in Magic of Voxel. So today we're going to look at how you do that. So let's go ahead and go back to Magic of Voxel, and we're going to load up Monument um, 1, which just comes with the program. Um, so if you download Magic of Voxel, you will have this over here in your models. Uh, thing. It's one of the sort of sample or default models that come. All right, so the first thing I'm going to notice, we're going to stitch together Monument 1 with Monument 9, and this one has a nice ground plane, um, which I like, and I want to stitch that seamlessly together with this one, and this one does not have a ground plane. Um, so we're going to fix that here really quickly. The other problem that we're going to have is that when we import or we stitch things together in the viewer program, when I stitch one or two things in here, the, the renderer, the viewer program, is going to use the palette from the model that comes in last, that's imported last. And I'll show you more on that in a second. But it's just important to keep that in mind because this one's not going to be imported as this color. It's actually going to sample this color palette because I'm going to import this one last. If I imported this one last, then all of these colors would actually get sampled from this palette. Okay, so one of the first things that's actually helpful to do, knowing that I'm going to bring this one in last, is to go ahead over here to your palette and hit save, and save that off uh, as a palette. And we have it actually already saved here as Monu 9 palette, so that's good. Um, we'll just replace it for fun. And now we can go into Monument 1 and we could recolor it um, using that palette. So we'll go ahead and say open, and we're going to go ahead and choose that palette, the one we just saved, Monument 9 palette, hit open. And you're like, oh no, all my colors went away. It's not a big deal. All you need to do is go ahead and use this pick voxel color over here. I covered this in my uh, how to fix coloring issues tutorial, so check that out on YouTube. But a really quick demonstration, just select this less than tool, or the pick voxel color, choose an area of the model that you want to recolor. Um, Magic of Voxel has highlighted the swatch at wants to use for that. And in this case, I'm just going to command drag down some other color that already exists. Uh, and then I'm just going to left click on this because I want to color that. And I see that I need this uh, one put in there. So I'm going to duplicate the palette there and maybe make it like a little darker. I don't know. We'll do the floor and make that uh, the blue color maybe. And that looks good enough to me for just demonstration purposes. Okay, so next thing we need to do is the other one had a ground plane. And so we need to move this off the ground a little bit. So I'm going to move it up one and it's at 126. The other model is at 97. So we'll just for, you could keep it at 126. It's not a big deal except for the ground planes won't match up exactly right. This one would be um, a little bit bigger than the other one. So let's just make this 97 in all directions just for fun. And that cut off the top of my model. So not for fun. Let's actually just make this 97 by 97 by 126. Um, and that's much better. So now we moved it up and we resized it so that our ground planes are going to match up in the other one. And now we're just going to use the face tool attach. And I happen to know that I believe it is, oh, I don't know. I forgot. I think it's this color that is the bottom, that is the ground color. So we'll just put a ground plane on there. And now you should save this out as a different model. You shouldn't overwrite um, the demonstration model. I mean, it's easy to get them back in here. Um, but you should save it out somewhere or whatever. I'm just going to overwrite the default model here um, by saving that. And now Monument 1 is using this palette, and it has all these things saved to it. The next thing you need to do before we stitch these two scenes, Monument 1 and Monument 9, um, together um, is you need to actually save this palette over to this model or it won't work. See how I created a new palette um, over here? 
and those colors are not over here. I'm actually just realizing this in real time, but those colors will not get brought in when this is imported last. So we actually just need to open up the new palette there, make sure that those colors come in. Um, they did not, so we'll go back to Monument 1 and hit Save and overwrite our Monument uh, 9 palette, hit Replace. Then we're going to open up Monument 9 and hit Open. And we'll open that one up. We, we're waiting for those three colors to show up over here, which they did. Now we're going to go ahead and hit Save. So the, the whole thing of that, the whole reason why we did that, is that we need all the models that we're importing basically using the same palette. Um, so you got to make sure that all the models that you're going to stitch together have the same palette saved and that that one is brought in last um, in the models. If they're all using the same one, it doesn't matter. But if they're all using different ones, the one that brought in last is the one that the viewer is going to use. Okay, so now that they're both using the same palette, they're both set at 97, they both have a ground plane. Let's check to see if I actually picked the right ground color really quickly. So we'll just sample the ground, and yep, that is the, the one, and that's the one I picked. So next we need to make a text file really quickly. Um, so we're going to just use text edit in uh, the Mac to do that. And it's really simple. You just put on the first line MV, or magic of voxel underscore import, uh, then the size of the scene. We'll just use 2048 for here, but you could certainly use something smaller. Um, and then on the first line, you're going to list off the first magic of voxel dot vox file you want to import. And the first three numbers, without uh, you know any spaces at the beginning, uh, is the x, the y, and the z offset. So this one is going to come in at 0, 0, 0. And we start with the forward slash and then the path to that um, the path to that vox file. You can use the sort of variable uh, dollar sign to mean the application folder for Magic of Voxel. So I think that would actually replace this. I'm just going to use the full path here. So in case you had your model stored somewhere else on your desktop or somewhere else, um, you would just put the path to wherever that model is right here. No spaces at the end. So make sure you have like that. Then the second line, you just list the second model you want to import. So this one, we're going to have a zero offset in X, but we're going to move it 97 um, voxels in Y, and we're not going to move it up at all. And then again, just a path to that. And this is the one that we're going to use the palette for because it's coming in second. This one's going to come in first. That one's going to come in second. And that's really all there is to it. So you just need to save this text file. If you want to know more about this text file, I'm going to put a link to it in the comments here. But um, the original post from... Um, EPH Tracy, I don't know how to say that man, sorry, um, is here on October uh, 8th, 2015, and you can actually get a lot more information about what the file looks for this. So this bottom part's all you actually need. This is just good commented information. I'll put a link to this tweet so that you can read up on the documentation. So next thing we're going to do is open up Magic of Voxel Viewer, and you see we already have a scene in here, and all we're going to do, it's really complicated, all you want to do is actually just drag that text file that you saved right over the top of the viewer. So there's my text file, I'm just going to let go and it's going to paste those scenes in um, together, which it did, and they matched up really nicely. And now I can render a scene that's larger than 126 pixels um, together. So that's how you use the Magic of Voxel Viewer and the MV underscore import command. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, I don't know, go ahead and subscribe to the video. we got more tutorials coming soon. Actually, I'm going to do a Unity one right after this. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. That's it. No, seriously, that's all there is to do.